welcome back to the Beatrice YouTube channel and today's class we'll be learning how to make this beautiful draped skirt okay we achieved this draping using slash and spread method and this was simplified as much as possible you can see that the hem line is also curved it's looking like on the back like i said you can see the drapes are continuous all to the back this is what you would like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you so to make this dress, I've drafted my patterns already. This is my basic skirt block. Okay, so this is the front together like this. And these are the two backs that we have. Okay, so this is the center back. And as you can see, the center back is the one that carries the zipper allowance. So now I'm going to be imitating it like I've sewn it. You know, this is the side. The side is the one that is usually shaped like this. While the center is the one that is straight which is supposed to match with the center front so the side will match with the side like this as we can see okay the side is going to match with the side like this and the center is going to the center is going to match with the center with the center front so i'm just going to do like an imitation as if i've sewn it so i'm going to be using my tape my paper tape or a masking tape or whatever it is to to gum this together like I am sewing this, sewing this. So the side front and the side back is going to be together. The side front and side back is going to be together. The center back is the one that is going to be outside here. So I'm going to gum this together now. We will continue with the tutorial. Okay, so now I've joined it together like this. And you can see we are not going to be having any side seam. The only seam we will have is at the back where we attach our zipper. And the one we are going to use to close it on the dart. So now the next thing for us now is to start drawing our style lines. As you can see, I've already drawn it with pencil, but I will explain everything that I did here. So now the space that you are seeing here is because remember we shaped this is a normal basic skirt. We shaped the waist and the hip line. And you, the waist is usually smaller than the hip. That is why we see this space in between like this and the basic skirt is just a normal basic skirt it's not a pencil skirt that's why it is easier for me to close it here assuming i shaped it in front of the pencil skirt i will still have this space in between so i just took it straight down from the hip to form a regular basic skirt okay so the next thing now is to talk about the style line of this of this skirt so it depends on what you want like for example now if you look at this picture that i have very well the gathers i'll still put it in the up in the video so that we'll see it better the gathers here is on the side while on the second picture which is this the gather is on the center front so it depends on where you choose to put your gathers so if you want to put it on the center front this is the center front you can see the crease line you just need to rule your line there so that all your points will meet at the center front and if you want it on the side you just take one side whichever side you choose and on the dark line of that side that is where you rule your markings so now i'll be ruling it with my marker so that we'll see it very well i choose to do this on my side on, on, the, on my side not on my center front so on my dark leg here i'm just going to be extending the line to have a straight line but if you are doing it you should do this with a pencil so that if you make mistakes it will be easier for you to clean it off okay i'm using a marker because i want us to see it very well so now this it means all the gathers that will be gathering will be towards this side of the skirt I'm choosing a side, you can choose a front, you can choose this other side depending on where you want it to be. So now the next thing is for me to start drawing my style line. So the first style line that I'll be drawing now is going to be on the upper part of the skirt. So now, on this upper part now, I'll be taking my points. I want it to be one and, it's going to be one and a half, it's going to be two, two inch intervals between your style lines. So for me, I'll be doing 1.7 okay so the first one i'll be drawing i'll be drawing my straight line and i'm going to be stopping it on this point where my my space the space between this the space that i explained earlier where it stops i'm going to stop also so i'm going to be ruling a straight line like i said i want it to be 1.75 in intervals so now i'll take my ruler now i'll rule the 1.75 all the way to the center okay you just need to mark 1.75 inches 
it can be two inches it can be one inch it can be one and a half depending on what you want so i'll do this off camera now and bring it back to show because i don't want this to be too long okay so the style lines have been drawn now and i have a space of 1.75 and you can see that i drew it up to because that is how the drape just forms from the from the upper part all the way to the lower part so now for the lower part of this now on this side that I choose to add to, to gather my drapes, which is this, I think the left side of my front body, I'm going to be marking an, a, a, a space of one and a half inch interval. You can do one inch, you can go, I don't, if you look at the picture very well, let me just show us this picture so that we understand what I'm doing better. Okay, so as you can see now, what I was explaining earlier is that you gather it in front, your center front like this, or you make your gathers at the side. So if you look at this picture, you will see that the gathers is not so long. It just packs at the upper side of these front bodies. That's why I don't want my intervals to be too long there. That's why I'm using half half inches interval. So it's just around this upper part. But if you want it extending below, you can do maybe one inch or one and a half, depending on what you want. But the inches I'll be working with here, it's going to be an on half half inch interval. So here now I'll take my tape through now and then do like five or six style lines. So it will be half inch interval inch. So I'm drawing the, I'm noting the half half inch, half half inch. So I have half half inch of one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And this now will be connected to the sides. So because I have six lines, six intervals here. On the line on the side, what I have left on this side, for example, let me choose to explain with this side first. I'll measure what I have here from where my slash lines, from where my uh, first upper slash line stop. I'll measure what I have here up to the end. I have around 18 inches here. So I will divide the 18 inches by this six point that I have. Remember, it's still going to meet it so that I'll have something accurate. 18 divided by 6 is going to give me 3 inches, which means I'll take my tape now and start marking 3, 3 inches interval on this side so that it will be right. I hope you understand that. So once I mark the 3, 3 inches interval, the next thing I'll do now is to start connecting it. So the first point here will go to the, I'll connect it to the first point on my sides. Okay? And because I've already marked this, I'm not going to be making any mistake. The second point here, I'm going to connect it to the second point on my side. I hope you understand this. It's quite simple. You just need to pay attention to it. So I'll keep marking it like that till I finish marking all the six points. Remember, we have six points and we already divided our sides to six points also. So it makes it easier for you to connect the points together. So everything that I've done on this side now, I'll move to the other side also and then divide the other side of the skirt also into six points and then i'm going to mark it so when you're marking the center remember this is the center back okay for the other side this is the side this is the side front so now if you want to connect the other one it's going to be from this side all the way to the center back again and like i did for this one i'm going to be dividing this side this side of the center back also into six and then i'm going to be pointing it so i already did the division and i have one two three four five six so now the next thing is for me to start connecting it from this point, from the first point to the first point on the side, till I connect everything. So it is that simple. Okay, so now I've completed my slash line and I'm sure we understand how we get to this point. If you don't understand it at any point in time, you just need to go back to the video and watch it carefully. It's quite uh, understandable, you can do it. So now, the next thing I'm going to do now is to draw this line, the slash line, the style line, sorry, of the M line of my skirt. And if you look at this design very well again, you will notice that the skirt is not straight at the M line here. It just goes like this and like this. So now it depends on how open you want it to be. If you want it to open like showing your tie or you want it to be a bit slow so that your tie will not be showing too much, you have to de determine that while drafting it. So for me here now, I'm just going to be going down by maybe from the upper part of my skirt now. 
I'm going to go in down by maybe 14 inches or 14 and a half inches, which I think is fine for me. If you want it higher, you can do maybe 11 inches, 12 inches, and if you want it lower, you can do 17. So from the 14 inches that I have here now, using my curved ruler, I'm going to be drawing like a curved line, okay, all the way to the hem line of the skirt. So I'm drawing this curve now. And then I'm going to make sure that I chew it so that it doesn't it's not too sharp. So that it blends well with what is coming from the upper part here. So on the other side also I'll take my curve and then I'm going to be drawing a slight curve also. So I want us to draw all these lines before we start the slashing so that it doesn't become too overwhelming for us. So this is the line that our M line is going to follow. Let me lift this up a bit so that we will see it well. So, okay, so I've drawn the lines now. You can see what the M line is looking like now. So now the next thing is for us to start. So before I start to slash these lines, I'm going to try to close up this space. This space here that I have here, I'm going to try to close it up. And to close it up, I'll need to slash it open. So on this dark area where my dark, dark stops, I'm going to completely cut it here. And then I'm going to gum it to this side. Okay. I'm going to gum it to this part of my skin it's using my masking tape. I hope you understand what I did there. I want to try to close up this gap that I have here. I want it to, to join to my center point. So here now, I've cut it and then using my masking tape, I'm going to gum it to my center front so that they can be together. So what I have done here now, I'll move over to the other side of the skirt also and then where my dart stops, I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to gum it back to my center front and then hold it with my masking tape. So after closing all this now, the next thing now is to cut out this side, this hemline styles that I created. So the style of my hemline now, I'm going to cut it out. Okay. So from the lower part, from the lower part here, I'm going to cut out following the curve that I created. So I will have like two parts now. Then I'm colored, cutting it, following this, the dart. So I've cut out my dart now. Then on the other side too, I'm going to cut it out. So it means I've closed the dart for one of the center fronts. For, for one of my front darts, okay? So after closing this dart now, the next thing I to close all the other darts that I have on this pattern. So here, I'm going to be closing this dart that I have on the back. And I'll also close this dart and also this dart. So I've closed the dart for the front, for the other front here. I've closed one for this side. So I just want to show how I'm closing it. I'm going to close the dart for this part also. So I'm just going to try to slash through the dart, one of the darts like this. And then I'm going to place it over it so that I'm going to use it to close it so you can see how I'm closing it. So now all our that have been closed. Now I can now open up my slash line so that I can spread it. But it's going to be quite big so I just need all to understand. The next thing now is to cut through the slash line. So I'm just going to cut through it but not completely. I'll leave a space here so that they don't just go apart. So I'm just slashing through my slash lines here and when I get here I'm going to try to close it here so that I don't miss, I don't lose it. So on this last part here I'm just going to use a masking tape to hold it so that I can also slash through it and I will not lose my patterns. So I'm slashing through this now then I think I may need to move this to another table because by the time I spread it it will become bigger. So I'll stress, I'm basically slicing through all these lines, then we'll spread it on our fabric. So like I was explaining, it's really big. So I'm just trying to explain with this small paper, with a miniature paper. Remember, we have 
drawn our slash lines and we've closed it that we understand it up to this point so now i'm slashing open the style line that we created on the hemline on both sides and at the same time i'm cutting off the dart on this side of the front skirt pattern so this is what we have the next thing now is to start slashing open these lines that we have so now you just need to slash through the style lines that you have but not completely okay you slash it but you don't slash everything completely so that you don't get confused you can also label them one two three four so that in case you mistakenly slash open any one of them you'll be able to trace it back okay so i keep i'm going to keep slashing it like this i'm just cutting through the lines that i already marked there that is what i'm doing so when i get to this upper part now that is detached i'm going to take my masking tape and i'll try to put them together okay so i've gotten to, the, to that part now i'll open my masking tape now and by the time I cut it off and it is detached, I'll try to match it together to this side. Okay, like this. I'm going to match it together so that it becomes complete like this. And then I'll hold it with my masking tape. Then I'll continue slashing. So the same thing that I did for this one, I'm going to do it for the other part of the skirt also. I hope you understand this. So I just figured if I do it in a smaller pattern like this, it will be more visible for us so that we'll have better understanding. So the the sellotape that I used to close my darts has removed. So I'm going to be using a masking tape. I think it holds it better. Okay. So with the masking tape I can still see through my line so it does not affect that. So I'm just going to slash everything open. Okay, so now I've slashed both sides open. You just need to take a fresh pattern or you place it directly on your fabric. I prefer to place directly on my fabric so that I will not be repeating it to uh, twice again. So once you place it like this, you start slashing, you start spreading your slash lines okay so depending on the amount of space that you have to work with you can spread you can spread maybe two two inches in tapa you place the first one like this you hold it with a masking tape like this and then you place your tape you measure two inches or whatever space that you want between each of your spread and then you place your next one and then you hold it with a masking tape then you go over to the next one again you measure it you open you place your masking tape till you completely spread out everything like this on this other side also you place it on the first paper also you place it on the on the pattern and you place your masking tape once you place your masking tape you measure the intervals and then you spread this also completely so that is how you spread both sides now i'm going to show us on the floor how i spread mine so that we can continue Okay, so this uh, mine now, I've spread it and between each of my spreads, I have a 4-4 four, four inch interval between each of them. Then after spreading it, I just cut around it like this. So this is the first one, which is the smaller one, and this is the bigger one. So you can see that it is quite big, so my cutting table cannot take them all at once. That was why I explained with a miniature. So now I'm going to take it now back to the table so that I will show us how we are going to be sewing it. But basically, basically these lines in between now, this space in between each of them, we're just going to be gradually it back to form my actual measurement that I started with. So you can see the way I'm gathering it. I'm going to gather it, gather it, gather it. Then I'll have my actual measurements to the other side also. I'm going to gather everything together to form my actual measurement. Okay, so once I gather it, sorry. Once I gather it, you can see what it is looking like. It should go back to the original size and my drapes will be formed for me. So like I said, you can use the needle and try to gather this while your pattern is still on. So that it can guide you. Then you carefully remove the patterns once you finish gathering it. So now, like I said, we'll move this to the table 
and continue with our sewing. Okay, so now we're on the table. The next thing is for us to start pleating or gathering. So I think I'm just going to pleat this, which means I'll be pleating from one hand to meet the other hand like this. So I'm just going to pleat it, fold it over now so that I'll have this back. And then I'm going to pleat this also, fold it over. Then this also I'll pleat it and fold it over like this. So you can either pleat it and hold with a needle and thread first or you go and place it directly on your, fire, on your machine so i'm going to hold this then fold this over like this then i'm going to use my needle and thread to hold this together like this and i'm going to tie it there so i'm still going to sew with the machine but i just want to use this to illustrate to us so that we will see what i am doing so now i'll tie this now and then I'll cut it and move over to the next one. So I've done this. I'll go over to the next one now and then pleat this also on top of this and then use my needle and try to tack it till I finish everything and then I gather it back to its original size. Okay, so I've gathered this now. This is the first one, this is the second one. So now I'm going to remove these patterns now. Then I'll take it to the sewing machine and I'll just fold it over and sew this together okay then after sewing it i'm just going to sew the back remember we've closed the side remember this is this part where we closed our side we've closed the side so there is no side seam on this we are going to be only having a seam at this side of the center front. remember this is the center front we do not have our gathers at the center front we shifted it to the dark area so we're going to be having a seam to join this together and then we're going to be having a seam at the center back also so that we can put our zipper and that is done so i'll do that now and then bring it back to show us so i've gone ahead to sew it now i can see i've joined it up to the point where i curved my m line so you can see what this is looking like it has been joined now and this is it on the right side okay this is what we have on the right side so now the next thing is for me to join it on the back so that I can add my zipper. So I'm just going to join the back like this and then I'll add my zipper allow my zipper to my zipper allowance so that the wearer can wear it. So I'll go to the machine now and sew it on the back. Okay, so this is our skirt. You can see the rushed effect that we created and this is our m line that we slanted you can see how lovely this is and like i said this does not have any side seam at all and the dripping is coming from the back remember we slashed it from the center but you can see that it just goes all the way to the back and i'm going to turn it to show us what the back is looking like so if, you, if you're okay with this length you can go with it and if you're not okay with this length you can from your basic bodies before you start adjusting your patterns you can create you can make it any length that you want but this is really looking gorgeous guys and i hope you really try this tutorial so i'm here to fix a zipper to this but i just held it with a pin and this is what it's looking like on the back like i said you can see the drips are continuous all to the back so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you enjoyed this give it a thumb give this a thumbs up like share with your friends comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye